in your own um, view, how is the state of microfinancing in the Philippines? Yeah, uh, microfinance in the Philippines is a very lucrative business, if I may say so, uh, since its commercialization more than a decade ago. Uh, the market is ripe because uh, funds are available not only locally but also internationally. And besides the availability of funds, uh, we are not lacking in clients, of course. There are a lot of poor Filipinos in Diba. And uh, we are fortunate that Philippines, the Philippines is one of the very few countries in the world which has its central bank having set up already a formal microfinance unit. Uh, most other countries doing microfinance, uh, parang wala sila nung uh, infrastructure ng regulatory body nila. No? Our BSP, uh, from the onset in late 90s, even during the time of the former governor Rafael Buenaventura, they already made microfinance uh, one of their uh, banner strategies in promoting financial inclusion. And what are the problems or issues that can curtail the deliver of our services, mm -hmm. microfinancing services to, to the people? Correct. Uh, nowadays, ang isang nakikita namin na uh, very challenging in terms of microfinance in the Philippines is the issue of over indebtedness. Again, uh, referring to the commercialization of microfinance, there are a lot of microfinance institutions already. Hundreds of rural banks are doing it, hundreds of NGOs, hundreds if not thousands of cooperatives are trying to do it. Now, if there are a lot of lenders, of course, the end clients, the borrowers, will have a lot of. Uh, uh, institutions trying to get their attention, trying to get their business. No? And there is a tendency for one client to uh, borrow, if it's, especially if it's very accessible for them, borrow from whichever microfinance institution would go their way. No? And sometimes, uh, with all due respect to the players, not all will consider whether the client is beginning to be borrowing from multi or from several institutions, not caring if the borrower is now getting over indebted. There will be instances where one borrower will be borrowing merely from one microfinance institution only to repay the second microfinance institution and you can just imagine the domino effect on that. How do you, how do you respond as a company to this kind of problem? Yeah, Seed Finance Corporation is a wholesale microfinance institution. When I say wholesale, we provide the funds plus the technical assistance or capacity building to microfinance institutions like rural banks, NGOs, and cooperative savings and credit cooperatives. These guys would in turn relend the funds that we lend to them to the end clients or the microfinance clients. Uh, our own way, our own little way of, of helping uh, these MFIs address the challenges is we provide heavy capacity building technical assistance. So we train them on all aspects of microfinance institutions. We, t we teach them delinquency management, portfolio management, strategic marketing, penetration and all. Uh, we teach these microfinance institutions to help protect their clients. Uh, two years ago, Seed Finance Corporation embarked on a new strategic direction we call, uh, which we call social performance management. Social performance management is now being bannered as one of the client protecting strategies. So very client focused, looking at the benefits, looking at how to protect the clients. So one, uh, uh, one aspect of that is client protection principle. So we teach our microfinance institutions within our network to look closely at the benefit to the client, uh, do no harm to the end clients, ensure that they are not uh, getting over indebted because notwithstanding you use microfinance to uh, pull one poor Filipino out of poverty but when that Filipino gets over indebted sooner or not later you'll be pushing that Filipino back to the pits of poverty again okay. so we try to teach our microfinance institutions how to balance things out okay go commercial try to be as sustainable as possible without forgetting that there is a social responsibility to the end How do you go about uh, uh, accomplishing your mission? How, how, how do you go about your operations? Mm -hmm. Where do you get your funds? And how do you yeah. reach out to your community? Yeah. Uh, Seed Finance Corporation started out in the mid-1990s, initially as a donor program uh, by an international foundation. Uh, it's called CARE, or Cooperative Assistance for Relief Everywhere. 
So it's an international foundation present in more than 70 countries. And in the Philippines, it started a micro-enterprise assistance program. That micro-enterprise program at that time also catered to MFIs or microfinance institutions. But uh, around six or seven years into the program, at the onset of the new millennium, uh, Care USA saw that the program was very self-sustaining, so much so that uh, it decided to spin off the program into a separate NGO. So Care uh, set up uh, an NGO called the Sustainable Economic Activity Development, uh, but with a very clear mandate to transform that NGO yet again into another formal microfinance institution. So in 2007, we finally incorporated what is now the Seed Finance Corporation. So its major stockholder would be Care USA, where our original funds came from. But uh, we started out democratizing our ownership. When we say democratizing, we invited our clients to begin investing also in the corporation. While we deal with the uh, cooperatives, rural banks, and NGOs, they can now ju not just borrow, but they can also invest at seed finance. Right now, we have, I think, more than 80 partner microfinance institutions, a mixture of banks, NGOs, and co-ops, and all of them are investing in our organization. Aside from this uh, care and uh, local investors, we also have uh, other sources of funds locally and internationally. We have partnerships with uh, international microfinance investment vehicles. These are fund managers who source out uh, microfinance facilities from the U.S. and from Europe. So we have amongst them developing world markets of the U.S., Microvest, and then there's uh, Planet Finance, there's uh, Incofin, Symbiotics, and Developing World Markets. Uh, in the Philippines, uh, we have partnerships with the Land Bank of the Philippines, the Bank of the Philippine Islands, uh, BPI Globe Bank, of the new subsidiary of BPI, and uh, Small Business Corporation. Okay. So these are the guys where we get our funds from. Have you seen any um, issues or, or uh, challenges in the Philippines uh, encounter? Mm -hmm. Do you see a uh, role of technology mm -hmm. to further expand the Correct. Uh, as I said earlier, Seed Finance operates nationwide. Right now, we have presence in more than 150,000 cities all over the country through the offices of our partner cooperatives, rural banks, and NGOs. But we don't have physical offices there in the provinces. We operate in 11 regions. 40 provinces and those 150 plus towns and cities, but only one physical ho office here in Quezon City. But we have locals, we have account officers who are locals. My account officer in charge of regional operations for Cebu and Bohol would be a resident of Cebu. So, but we do everything virtually. You know? So we capitalize on technology to be able to work efficient, efficiently with uh, very minimal cost, but still able to deliver our uh, objectives for our partners. So my people are home-based, they telecommute, they work from home. We just issue them with laptops, Wi-Fi sticks, GPRS phones, and then let them go. But we understand that uh, we still, we on a day-to-day -day basis, we are trying to improve on our technological capacities. Now we're looking at uh, GPS tracking systems for our people. Not to track where they're going or whether they're actually doing their job, but to provide them more responsive support. So, technology, technological challenges, one issue would be it, it's still expensive nowadays. No? While there are options to get cheaper uh, alternatives, uh, but uh, sometimes this, this will not work and this will not fit our requirements. So we try to, fi to find funds uh, elsewhere. Sometimes we get uh, grant facilities from abroad, from our partner financial institutions abroad, to provide us the funds that can help us build the technological infrastructure. What's your infrastructure? Mm. Right now, uh, we have our own systems department here at the head office, which is connected electronically by email and all other electronic applications with our fields field operations. Now our field operations are also collect connected electronically with our partner microfinance institutions. For example, where 
uh, traditionally, a microfinance institution borrower will have to accomplish forms and send them by mail or by courier to their lender bank or their lender wholesale financial institution. Uh, with us, all they need to do is log on to our website, check the forms there, accomplish the forms online, and those automatically get sent to my regional account officers. The account officers are notified via text messages that they have uh, applications for drawdowns pending. So they log on, whether using their GPRS phones or their netbooks, and then forwards their recommendations to our field operations division, copied furnish our uh, head office, and everything is done electronically. We can also release the money to these microfinance institutions electronically via mobile banking uh, arrangements with our depository banks or using our smart money infrastructure. We have a partnership with, this, with smart communications where the smart money infrastructure is a uh, mobile money facility. So we can also release a cooperative's request for, let's say, 5 million peso loan, transferring it via text through their smart money accounts. Our record to beat is a loan being applied at 11 in the morning and being released at 1 in the afternoon, yeah. shortly after lunch, <laughs> so just through electronic work. infrastructure. You, what are your you know, plans that you haven't really been, that hasn't been accomplished yet? Mm -hmm. Do you have any, do you have your vision for the company? Do you mm -hmm. have any specific plans that make it, that make it more efficient mm -hmm. as, you know, as a service organization? Uh, yeah. Yes. Uh, since 2010, uh, we started out on our mobile banking project. Uh, we're riding heavily on our mobile banking infrastructure together with our other strategic partners. We have a partnership with Smart Communications on, on mobile money, mobile phone banking, and then a partnership with uh, an ATM provider, it's called NCash, uh, which is also a partner of the Rural Bankers Association, I understand, uh, to provide ATM banking facilities also with my partners. You know? Uh, we're investing heavily on the technology. We're also investing heavily on our people's capacity because uh, we believe that mobile banking is the way to make microfinance sexier. Why sexier? We all know that microfinance should be able to provide access. So we'd like to think if it's microfinance, it should be accessible. Now, it's not important that the client only has access. The access must be reliable, meaning when they need the money, the money is there. Reliable. Okay, so that's A, that's R. And thirdly, it should not only be accessible, not only reliable, but more importantly, it should be affordable. So A, R, A, R, that's why sexy. Okay. <laughs> so with mobile banking, there's the access and they have the money when they need it. And we are able to lend the money at better rates, cheaper rates, because we are more efficient when we do it through the mobile banking way. I, I would like to, uh, to go back. How do you um, identify someone who a good power? Mm -hmm. And how do you identify, you know, like given that three are, you know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, fast yeah. enough, how do you identify who's going to get that kind of a grant? Yes. Uh, uh, as I said, we deal with institutions, yes. no? cooperatives, rural banks, NGOs. We also have an electronic uh, uh, facility, an electronic system to rate them also. So an account officer of seed finance operating in Bohol, for example, will just request from a cooperative who wants to get accredited and avail of our financial assistance to submit uh, the usual documentary requirements. But of course, the financial information and a brief profile of the microfinance operations of that entity. So the account officer sends an Excel-based template, very simple Excel-based template to the cooperative. Okay, please input on this sheet your financial information and some non-financial info too, like number of clients, which barangay, so forth and so on. And then that co-op emails that form, that uh, Excel-based form to my account officer. My account officer does a few tweaking and automatically all those information goes into separate sheets for global and local standards of microfinance. We have global standards uh, called the CGAP standards or the 
standards developed by the consul consultative group to assist the poorest. Okay. So it will show there whether an MFI is adhering to global standards vis-a-vis -vis its portfolio quality, its efficiency in operations, the sustainability of operations, and its outreach. Then again, uh, this one set of financial and non-financial information goes to another sheet still. Uh, this sheet now uh, rates the MFI according to our local standards, the PESO standards. PESO is an acronym for Portfolio, Efficiency, Sustainability, and Outreach. And uh, these standards were developed by the National Credit Council. So that sheet will tell us whether the MFI is again adhering to local standards. And then our partner, the Small Business Corporation, taught us a risk-based method of rating MFIs. And then again, another sheet will show us whether the risk rating of the MFI is acceptable. Then of course, a fourth sheet, which is an in-house uh, in house rating sheet developed by Seed Finance, incorporating all the global CGAP, local PESO, and the risk-based standards. Any um, success story of an institution mm -hmm. or a poor bank that mm -hmm. you know, and that's now, you know, reached success in their own mm -hmm. uh, We have a partner cooperative, a microfinance. Uh, originally, it's not microfinance oriented. No? Uh, a cooperative in Cebu, in uh, Pinamungahan, Cebu. That's around two hours from Cebu City. It started out in uh, the started out in the beginning as a. Farmers Association, a Samahang Nayon. Uh, I remember they have 32 farmer members initially with 3,500 pesos uh, capital buildup. Okay, that's how cooperatives go. Then they uh, uh, applied for a cooperative license, and then uh, sooner or later uh, we were able to provide them some assistance, taught them the rudiments of microfinance. And we're proud to say that since our partnership with this cooperative in the late 90s to present, this cooperative now has grown to have around 18 branches in the provinces of Cebu and Leyte. From 32 farmer members, this cooperative now has uh, around 60,000 members. From 3,500 pesos initial capital, this cooperative will now have around more than half a billion peso resources. If that's not success, I don't know what is. And my last question. Yes, sir. Is your, you know, what is your vision on a macro level mm -hmm. in terms of Microsoft? Well, in terms of the service delivery, mm -hmm. how do more Filipinos get, you know, um, benefit more from microfinance? Yes. We have an initiative right now. Uh, we signed a partnership, a consortium partnership, uh, with the Microfinance Council of the Philippines on outreach mapping. What is outreach mapping? The project aims to map where the poor clients are and where the microfinance institutions are. MFIs are supposed to serve the poor, so they should be there where the poor are. Unfortunately, the initial results of the study are showing that where the poor are, the MFIs are not there. They're usually in the, rural, in the urban areas where there's a huge concentration of potential micro-enterprising clients. But the rural poor, especially those in hard-to-reach areas, in island communities, upland communities, sad to say, are not being rich. So our perspective is that we go, seed finance consciously targets hard-to-reach areas, island communities, upland communities, conflict-ridden areas, disaster-prone areas. We have partners in Ginsaugon Leyte, if you remember the landslide. We have partners in Lanao. We go to Dinagat Island, we go to Bidiran Island, we even went to Limasawa Island. Notwithstanding Magellan was there first, or the first mass rather was there, no? But we also went there, and from southern Leyte, of the tip of Padre Burgos, southern Leyte, to get to Limasawa Island, you get to pass through three bodies of water, but we're there. And we're being, bringing the benefits not only of uh, what seed finance can provide in terms of microfinance funding and capacity building, but uh, more importantly, mobile banking. Because before, in island communities, 
entrepreneurs will have to travel from the island to the mainland two hours, two and a half hours, three hours just to get their goods. Now, if they're in the island, they simply text their suppliers, transfer the money electronically. Their suppliers simply load the goods to the next ferry going back to the island without the entrepreneur spending four hours. So that's how we try to do things. Thank you, sir. Thank you for the time. Thank you.